Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. Jesus, thank you that you are in control. You are far, infinitely above all we can ask or think or imagine or comprehend. Lord Jesus, now it is time for the ministers to weep, to howl, to get your heart. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God, we have been running to things that is not you. Father, forgive us. It's demonic. It's evil. We have been adulterous as your leaders, as your ministers. Father, I'm sorry. Heal us, oh God. Oh God, let us be ready for the breakthrough. Let us be ready for those who are falling. The truth is scattered in the streets and we need you, Jesus. Now, please, I'm sorry. Thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time? God is good. Guys, um, uh, uh, Nathaniel did a sermon jam as well as um, there's something else that I need to play uh, and it's going the Lord gave me the word today and as I was saying Lord what's your message and he didn't give me a word throughout the whole week and I we were driving to a friend's house um, Ramon and Jen's house and then uh, on the way back I said Lord I don't know what to, what to do I mean I, I I will do whatever you say if we just pray and enjoy the time great the Lord said, you put the music on, I'll take care of the rest. Okay, so, here it goes. Now, Lord, just please give the words that you want to speak, because I don't... Uh, in my fleshly vessel... There are ideas, and I don't want to stand in your way. Help us all, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, go to Joel 2. If you guys have your Bibles, go to Joel 2. Um, just remember, run for your life and run to Jesus. Guys, I, um, this has been a house for, um, for people who are desiring to preach the gospel, to share the gospel, to take the message of Jesus Christ to everywhere. I hope you're convicted of your sins you come here. I, I wake up and I'm convicted. I pray that you are faced with your humanity every day. I pray we're not comfortable. I don't want to be comfortable. I've seen what happens when people get comfortable. It's destruction. There's no peace. There's no internal peace from head to foot when you are comfortable. Oh, your body may be comfortable. Your heart's not comfortable. You really is. And your brain will... And it's really the devil who makes you think, oh, this is what... True joy and comfort. No, it's not. Let the priest. I'm, I'm at um, verse 17. Let the priests, the Lord's ministers. So, uh, verse 17. Let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, have pity on your people, Lord. And do not make your inheritance a disgrace, an object of scorn among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? And the Lord became jealous for his land and spared his people. The Lord answered his people and said, uh, uh, actually, he's, I'm going to stop right there. He became jealous for his land and spared his people. Um... There is, um, 
this um we as ministers don't pre weep enough. I'm afraid we I'm sorry guys, we don't um we have pride in us. We think we're hot snot. God is ready, more ready to give than we are able to receive. The encouragement is, look, I am about to send you grain, new wine, and olive oil. You'll be satiated with them, and I will no longer make you a disgrace among the nations. Um, I want to go to Song of Solomon. Go to chapter 5, or 4. Go to chapter 4. Chapter 4. Yeah. Um, verse 6. Father, your words are pure. Tried in a furnace seven times. Every word of yours is pure. Proverbs 30. You are a refuge to those who run to you. Guys, in that in that proverb it says that every word of yours is refined. Guys, we don't love him. We don't want to leave what we're holding on to. I know we're holding on to things. I know we are. There's too much of us in the way. We don't love him. We're not willing to walk up that hill of of Calvary with him. That mountain is ready for healing. I shared with someone the very thing that you are inconvenienced of. We have so many ideas of what we want to do during the day, during the week. But the one thing that little thing that's just poking you. Man, I really don't want to do that. Yeah. That's the cross in your life at that moment. Where God is trying to say, Child, talk to me. I'm there if you look at me. And there's something... God, raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. Where you're like, I don't want to do that. Tough. Unless you get there, in that crucifying place, you will not see God. You'll see his hand, you won't see his face. It's not easy. God said, the way that is easy will lead you to destruction. Verse 6, before the day breaks, or shall I say, breathes, I will make, and this is, this is, Watch Mani does a book on the Song of Solomon, Song of Solomon, and point, and sh I haven't read it, I've just heard about it, but I can confirm it from what the Lord has shown us. It's a, it is a picture of Christ to you individually, to his church his body he says this before the day breaks or breathes and the shadows flee that's when the light comes up I the male figure Jesus will make my way to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense okay I'm, before I get to seven guys look at verse six hey yeah Um, myrrh was used in embalming 
Myrrh was used for a dead body. Myrrh was used, guys, because something died and it stinks. And it overpowers the stench. We have myrrh. It, like, it's also numbing if you put it on your skin. <laughs> it's funny how it, how it works. It's good for your mouth, actually. It does. It, it, it silences. It numbs it. The amazing thing about myrrh, you have to slash the tree, literally cut it, for it to ooze. Okay, frankincense is similar. You have to pierce it, or maybe the other way around. Guys, this is our flesh. This is, he says that that's where Jesus went, is that mountain. He says this about you. Just, if you can, just close your eyes for a second. Just do this. Close your eyes for a second. Picture Jesus talking to you. And he says, and, and, and he does say this. You are absolutely beautiful, my darling. With no imperfection in you. He says that about you. He says there's no imperfection in you. You're absolutely beautiful. And he says, come with me from Lebanon. My bride, with me from Lebanon. Descend from the peak of Amana, from the summit of Sinir and Hermon, from the dens of lions, from the mountains of leopards. Wait a minute. That's the area of difficulty. That's the area of, of, of being accosted. He says, come, from, come with me from there. Do this one more time, please. Close your eyes. Picture Jesus saying this to you. You have captured my heart, my sister or companion, my bride. You've captured my heart with one glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How delightful your love is, my sister, my bride. Your love is much better than wine. The fragrance of your perfume than any balsam. I've come to my garden. Or shall we say heart, which is your heart. My sister, my bride, I gather or pluck my myrrh, the bard that died from the garden of your heart with my spices. Galatians 5. Fruits of the Spirit. Spices. I eat my honeycomb. God's word, Psalm 19, is sweeter than honey. In ancient Hebrew, God's word was equated to honey. In fact, the rabbis would, for the Torah students, would take... God would give them, give us a, a, a finger full of honey and put it in their students' mouths and say, God's word is like that. I eat my honeycomb with my honey. I drink my wine rejoicing with my milk. Now, here's the call. Here's the call. If you have pride in your heart, and there's something you don't want to let go, this is a word of knowledge. You know who you are. You're holding on to something. Let it go. Stop. Let go of the pride. You're not all that hot. You don't know any better than the Lord. Just confess it and say, God, I've been proud. I'm sorry. I thought I knew it all. Stop. Just... Stop. It's sin. It slaps God in the face. He opposes you. That area of your life that is proud, he opposes it. He hates it. Six things an abomination to the Lord. There's six things the Lord hates, seven an abomination. A proud heart. He says, I don't like it. He says, I will not come and talk to you in the very way you need me to talk to you. I will not answer your prayer because you're still holding on to that thing. You need to stop. You need to confess it. You need to come to me. 
confess your pride and say, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. And only then and only then you can say, chapter 4, verse 16, Awake, north wind, come, south wind. Ruach, blow on my garden. But then the next chapter he says, I come to my garden. That's our heart. That is the new Garden of Eden when Christ is there. And we are saying, please blow on my heart. Please blow on it. And spread the fragrance of its spices. The fruit of the Spirit. Your fruit. Let my love, that's Jesus, come to his garden. Eat its choicest fruit. Why don't you always say it to me? Jesus. I've come. I've done what you've asked. I've cried out. Jesus, you were so gracious to forgive. You are so merciful. I've done all I've known to do. Only you can speak to our hearts. Only you can destroy our pride. Only you can tear down these walls of unforgiveness and bitterness. Lord, there's nothing left to say but to just cry. You have wooed your people. <laughs> and you are so patient. Oh God, help us to run from our bitterness, from our anger, from our self-vindication, justification, or anything in our heart that says, I deserve to be angry. Oh God, we don't deserve anything. We don't deserve the life we have the children we have, the blessings we have. We don't deserve it. Oh God, have mercy on us. Oh God. <laughs> Consecrated ourselves. Oh God, we're not ready for revival. We are not. We want it, but we're not ready for revival. Oh God, because if you come and you sweep this land, you're gonna sweep us away too. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh God, we're not ready to lay it down. Oh God. Oh Jesus. Oh God, we have not been patient. I'm sorry. Oh God, we have held on to our bitterness and our petty disputes. We have wanted comfort. And we have wanted convenience. Oh Jesus, I'm sorry. We've wanted to help. Uh, not wanting to throw ourselves completely upon you and, and delay our obedience to you. Oh God, and you said, why can't you obey me now? Because that's obedience. Oh God, we've held on to our disobedience. Because... Because slow obedience is no obedience. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We've known what we ought to do and we've not done it. Oh God, have mercy upon us. We've wanted children. We've wanted spouses. We've wanted our way and we can't. And we've not waited upon you. I'm sorry. Have mercy on us, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We thank you. Oh God, we're sinners. Help us to feel the weight of our sin. Because we don't love enough. Oh God. And if we won't weep for our sin, Father, I will weep. It's all I know to do is weep. Perhaps some tears. 
Oh God, your Holy Spirit is so present with us. Oh God, but we don't know how to worship rightly. And you so are so loving. But yet we hold on to self-righteousness. We think because we're Christians or we've called out to you for salvation that you say, okay, now you're going to come meet us and have some sort of worship time. No. You want us to be real with you. To hate our sin. Oh God, no, no. Where we've neglected the assembling of ourselves because we're so listening to the devil's lies of doubt, confusion, human affection, and we're not willing to bear the rod on our own children to say, no, sorry, we've been weak. We've wanted the world's goods and what the world has to offer. We've wanted our position. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Oh God, we don't give where we ought. We don't weep where we ought. We don't deny ourselves. I'm sorry. Holy Spirit. We repent. I'm sorry. Oh God, help us to know what to do from here. Oh, Jesus, help us. Have mercy. We're not ready. I'm sorry. If all we do is our just loving our families. Oh, God, that's enough. Forgive us. Abba, where we have never wept in our lives with aching and grieving, as Brother Wilkerson saying, having anguish. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. There are people that don't have your heart that weep. Oh, God. We're not like Jeremiah weeping. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, God. Oh God, we don't rent our hearts. <laughs> oh God. Oh God, help us to weep again. Oh God, help us to be messy. Oh God, help us to be real. <laughs> real with one another and to say how faithful you've been. And not to hide it. Oh God, we put our light under a bushel. We hide our faith. We hide the witness, the very precious talent you've given us. And you, if, if, if you were to come now, you would say, you wicked, lazy servant. I gave you talent, gold, and you hid it. Oh God, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us for not being faithful. Have mercy on us for wanting sexual immorality. Wanting our own physical pleasure and not willing to deny ourselves and say, you know what? I don't care. I don't need it. I don't need anything. I need Jesus. Oh God, we've not run to you. Oh God, we've run to our closet sin. We've run, we've, we've run to pornography. We've run to certain girlfriends or certain people or certain uh, people that will make us feel better. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, have mercy. Forgive us for human affection. Oh God, we want things that make us feel good about ourselves. No, we need to feel better about ourselves. We need to repent. We need to repent. We need to be our best. We need to uh, Your resurrection is far greater. And we are of no worth of deserving of it. Oh God, have mercy. Oh God. Oh God. Have mercy and forgive us, oh God. In Jesus' name. 
Jesus. Did you just not call me? 